This is the AEW Dynamite April 10, 2024 Full Show Results video which takes place at Charleston Coliseum in Charleston, West Virginia. Samoa Joe makes his entrance for the match against Dustin Rhodes, but Shane Strickland attacks Samoa Joe from behind during his entrance and they brawl on the floor near the stage, where Joe quickly gets the upper hand and lays swerve out. Leaning a table against the barricade, Shane gets away, and spears Samoa through the table, then medics and referees check on Joe and help him to the back. Then we saw a match between Adam Copeland vs Penta L0 Mido for the AEW TNT Championship, and the result of this match was Adam Copeland defeated Penta L0 Mido by pinfall with a spear to retain the AEW TNT Championship. Post-match, the lights go down and they come back up and Julia Hart is staring Copeland down, Brody King attacks him from behind and face washes him in the corner, putting boots on him and choking him. Sleeper hold applied, but here comes Willow Nightingale to attack Julia, Brody lets go of Adam to save her and Copeland wakes up and fights him, low bridging him to the floor. Renee Paquette interviews Chris Jericho, Hook, and Katsuyori Shibata and Jericho says Hook bringing Shibata in shows that he's listening and the strategy tonight is that they'll sit under his learning tree as he takes care of Anthony Agago. Tag to Hook, he dumps Shane Taylor on his head, and then Shibata comes in to tap Lee Moriarty out, they all fist bump and Shibata uses his phone to ask what Jericho's deal is before complimenting Renee on her necklace. Back from the commercial, Eddie Kingston and Mark Briscoe are interviewed backstage by Renee Paquette and Briscoe says he's feeling amazing but simultaneously he's in pain after the war he had with Kingston and Eddie says he's beat up too but it's pro wrestling and they do what they gotta do. Adam Copeland rolls up and says he loves them and asks if they're good and says he's as good as he can be and he wants to make sure they're good for Dynasty. Willow Nightingale and Stokely Hathaway are there and Stoke tries to get her a TNT Championship match but Willow waves him off and suggests a mixed tag and Adam agrees, Stoke awkwardly apologizes to Eddie, who shrugs, and that's that. The Young Bucks are backstage and Nicholas Jackson wants to just air the footage but Matthew asks him to provide some context. The biggest show in wrestling history, their biggest match, but right before that match there was an incident backstage between two individuals, the scapegoat and Jack Perry. CM Punk made the whole show about himself and his good friends with FTR, and that got them thinking FTR was the mastermind behind the whole thing. While they were dealing with the fallout from this incident they were off their game and the locker room was in disarray, journalists who needed answers, and they had no time to hydrate or even pray. So the history books say FTR beat the Young Bucks at All In, but there should be a giant asterisk next to the win, the incident itself isn't even the worst part, it's short, a high school scrap but Matthew argues that the ramifications of the incident threatened to take the show down. They rolled the tape and we saw that Jack Perry was backstage and CM Punk walked up to him, title in hand, Joe in the far corner of the room. They square up and talk, Punk turns to his side like Perry just told him a whopper, they keep going, Punk shoves him twice, Jack comes in, CM gets a guillotine choke and Samoa Joe pulls Perry away while some guys I can't quite recognize pull Punk back, that's it, that's the big reveal that CM Punk's great sin, two shoves and a choke. Anyway, the Bucks say the real bad part is after all that FTR wanted to shake their hands. FTR hit the ring and ask why the Bucks aired the footage, and what they were hoping to accomplish. They're sick and tired of hearing and talking about this and say the Bucks constantly let everyone know that without them hundreds of people would be out of jobs, there'd be no AEW, and the crazy part is Dax Harwood doesn't necessarily disagree. Without the Young Bucks, he still might be shaving Cash Wheeler's back, but somewhere along the line, they stopped caring about AEW and only started caring about EVP, and on the back of every single man and woman back there who comes to week, they will continue to build this for every single man and woman who buys a ticket and comes to a show, and if the Bucks want to be there great. This ain't about Wembley, it's not about All Out, it's about a company he loves, an industry he loves, and the AEW World Tag Team Championship. Rene Paquette interviews Will Osprey on the stage and Will says he's one of the only guys traveling from the UK to America every single week and delivering some of the best wrestling matches this world has ever seen, and the guy who said people who are afraid of the grind only got where they are by grinding on the boss's daughter. He addresses Brian saying he's faster and stronger and he'll need to take him down on the mat to beat him by saying that younger fresher men have tried and failed but Danielson is special and he can't say he's the best in the world until he pins Brian in the middle of that ring, and he will because he's Will Osprey and he's on another level. Julia Hart gets a video package about how she's going to turn Willow's smile into a frown. 
The next match happened between Katsuyori Shibata and Chris Jericho and Hook vs Shane Taylor Promotions, and the result of this match was Shane Taylor Promotions defeated Katsuyori Shibata and Chris Jericho and Hook by pinfall when Jericho and Hook started arguing, meanwhile, Lee Moriarty gets the pin after hitting Brainbuster on Katsuyori Shibata. Post-match, Hook tells Jericho off while going to check on Shibata and help him up. The next match happened between Cristiano Argento vs Kazuchika Okada, and the result of this match was Kazuchika Okada defeated Cristiano Argento by pinfall after hitting the Rainmaker. Post-match, Okada gets on the mic and accepts Pac's challenge and he'll see him at Dynasty and the bastard comes down with violence on his mind but the young bucks are right behind him and throw him in the ring, CM Punk, chance start, FTR comes in but get overwhelmed and the elite stand tall after a chair shot from Okada takes Pac down. Backstage the Bang Bang Gang give us a recap of how they crushed Darby Allen's dreams, defended the ROH World 6-Man Tag Team Championship, Switchblade put a big bad beating on Billy Gunn and he wants the ass boys to go find someone for him to beat up on Rampage this week. Back from the commercial, Renee Paquette is presiding over a Charleston Champagne Championship toast, whatever that may be and she introduces Thunder Rosa and then Tony Storm. Storm throws champagne in Thunder's face, and tries to wipe her face paint off, Rosa fights back, Luther breaks them up, and Diana Perazzo tries to come to Thunder's aid but she shoves her aside, Storm tags a big drink of champagne right from the bottle and kisses Mariah May as she comes through. The next match happened between Anna Jay vs Mariah May, and the result of this match was Mariah May defeated Anna Jay by pinfall with a sunset flip. Post-match, Anna Jay puts her in the Queen's Lair but Mina Shirakawa makes the save. Shirakawa gets a pair of champagne glasses and cradles Anna on the mat, holding one to her lips gently and there is no heterosexual expression and they just kissed. Mercedes Moan is looking like a ContraPoints bit character while she's being interviewed by Alex Marvas and she talks about her past with Willow Nightingale and says she's looking forward to double or nothing. Before she can say who she'd rather fight, the lights go out and there's the sounds of a struggle and the lights come back up and Moan is hurting on the floor as we go to break. In the main event of the show, we saw a match between Dustin Rhodes vs Samoa Joe, and the result of this match was Samoa Joe defeated Dustin Rhodes by pinfall with a lateral press. Post-match, Samoa Joe chokes Dustin out with the coquina clutch, but Swerve Strickland arrives and breaks it up with a house call move. Strickland grabs the chain, loads his fist, and drops Joe with a punch, whipping at him, but Samoa rolls out of the ring. Samoa Joe staggered as the locker room emptied and Prince Nana grabbed the title belt and presented it to Swerve and Shane Strickland holds the title with gravitas while Nana dances behind him, he holds it up at an apoplectic Samoa Joe and the show goes off the air. Hope you liked the video, and thanks for watching the video.